Добрый день, коллеги. Good morning, distinguished colleagues. My name is Anastasia Alexandrovich. I represent the Belarusian Press Club. I would like to thank everyone who are joining us right now, our broadcast. Today we have Rahu uh, Rastapenia, the director of the Chatham House Initiative of Belarus. He will tell us about the results of the recent sociological survey about uh, what Belarusians think uh, about Belarusians' views on the military conflict between Russia and Ukraine, the origin of the information and the source of the information affects their point of view and so on. Colleagues, if you have any questions, please ask them in the chat or raise your questions, raise your hands later on. So the first question, uh, whether you will have extra representation, the answer is yes. Uh, we already have slides from Rehor and you will have them, you, you can save them on your um, PC. Thank you, Anastasia, for organizing this briefing. Thank you for joining us. I will start by saying that today we also launched a website called Belarus.org. There you'll be able to find the eighth results of the eighth wave of research that we have been conducting. And it's about Belarusians' views on uh, the war in Ukraine. There you'll be able to find the presentations both in Russian and in English. Well, now as I suggest we launch the presentation. I hope you can see the slides. Do you? Yes, we do. That's great. Thank you very much for this. We'll I'll start by saying that we conducted this research from the 5th to 14th of March. So we finished about 10 days ago. Since it's already eighth wave, methodology remains the same, but I must go back to it again. Our sample corresponds to the structure of the urban population and uh, uh, the poll is conducted using the computer assisted web interview, C-A-W-I. So therefore, despite the fact that our sample has been weighted to accurately reflect the makeup of Belarus society, it is very much possible that for, for Lukashenko and his policies may be slightly higher than this poll indicates since uh, Lukashenko's supporters tend to be less socially and economically active than his detractors. We also must acknowledge the so-called fear factor affecting political surveys in Belarus. So some people, respondents may hesitate to express the negative attitude towards Lukashenko. One more important point, we believe in the transparency of our research. We always say that, always describe to people how we do this. We publish the replies of all the our respondents using the Excel file and SAV file. So everyone can recheck our data. By the way, all this data, regarding all the waves of our previous research can be found at the above mentioned website. Now, uh, let's talk about the presentation. And let's discuss what Belarusians think about uh, the war. I believe I need about 20 minutes to cover the presentation, then I'll be happy to answer your questions. I'll start by saying that uh, by describing what Belarusians think about the presence of Russian troops in Belarus. What we saw in our research is that very often Belarusians select an answer that they are not sure. It uh, shows the influence of fear and uh, the fact that people don't understand much about what is happening in the country. Therefore, the presence of the Russian forces is not perceived uh, as black and white, but when we talk about concentration, we see the diminishing support. 
for the presence of Russian troops in Belarus. It's important to note that when we talk, when we say that uh, the number of Russian troops in Belarus should grow, very rarely, very seldom, only 9% of people respondents believe that it should be done, which means that the majority of people uh, of Belarusians don't support the high concentration of uh, Russian troops in Belarus. The next question is uh, about participation of Belarusian military action. Do Belarusians feel it? We asked them to agree or disagree that the statement that Belarus is an aggressive country in the war against Ukraine. And the answers was well, Belarus isn't involved, Belarus is on the Ukrainian side, on the Russian side, and not sure. We see that 39% of respondents believe that um, Belarus, isn't, Belarus isn't involved in this conflict. And those are proponents of the current regime. Even though this rockets and the uh, uh, fight from territory of Belarus and uh, those territories used by Russian forces. The majority uh, don't believe that, uh, disagree with the statement that uh, Belarus is an aggressive country. Only one fifth, about 22% believe that uh, Belarus is an aggressive country. So if we look at how the current authorities in Belarus helping the Kremlin in their military actions, we see that there's a, it's the Belarusian authorities provide the military infrastructure and the territory to Russian forces. And we see that the majority of Belarusian respondents are not happy with that. The majority of them are against Russians shelling Ukraine from the territory of Belarus. This is an emotional statement. And the less emotional statement is that Belarus should not let Russia use its territory to wage war with Ukraine. In other words, we see that the majority of Belarusians are against the, Bel the Belarusian territory being used as it is currently used in the war with Ukraine. The next question is about the Russian base of nuclear weapons in Belarus. This issue has been discussed for a long time, and we have been asking this question in the past. Nothing has really changed over the last year in this respect, with 44 or 48 percent of people responding saying that they are negative about the nuclear. Russian military base appearing in Belarus, and uh, about 24%, uh, twice as less, are positive about that. But we must understand that the number of different uh, people is 11%. This time, we also asked Belarusians about the nuclear weapons in Belarus, and we saw that Belarusians, the mass, um, and the majority are negative about that. And uh, the proponents of the current authorities are against that. The next key part of the presentation is about the participation of, Bel of Belarus in the military action. There are several points worth our attention in this respect. We'll start by describing the sympathies here. If we look at the slide, we'll see that the third of the Belarusians are in favor of uh, Russians' actions. And uh, here are 28 percent support Russia's actions, but do not engage in the conflict. That's what they responded. Three more percent believe that Belarus should take part in the conflict on Russia's side, and two more percent 
believe that uh, Belarus should condemn Russia's Ukraine's actions, but not engage in the conflict. But third, one fourth of Belarusians believe that um, Belarusians should declare complete neutrality and expel all foreign troops, and one fifth of respondents believe that. The uh, in favor of the pre Ukrainian variants. In other words, they condemn Russian actions but not engage in the conflict, which is 15% of respondents, and uh, support Ukraine but not engage in the conflict, but 4%, and take part in the conflict on the Ukraine size 1%. The same time, uh, 21 percent of the respondents said they were not sure. It's important to note here that Belarus is uh, uh, almost unanimously responded that I um, believe that uh, Belarus should not get engaged in these hostilities, with uh, three percent saying that they take part, should take part in the conflict on the Russian side, and one percent who said that Bill should take part in the conflict on Ukraine side. In other words, we see that uh, Belarusians do not want to take part in this war. On the right, I also repeat the, what was written in the previous slides, that the majority of Belarusians do not support the presence of Russian military in Belarus and uh, do not support uh, help provided to Russians and uh, placement of Russian weapons in Belarus. These points are very important. It's important to understand that even though we say that one third of the respondents are in favor of pro-Russian options, at the same time, they don't see themselves as part of this conflict. Let's move to the next slide. This is what Belarusians expect in the next three months at least. Here, we must understand that we asked this question at the beginning of March, from the 5th until the 14th of March. And we see that many expectations of people are already happening in front of our eyes. Belarusians believed several weeks ago that there will be more sanctions, prices will rise, there will be a devaluation of the Russian ruble, it will be more difficult to buy foreign currencies. All these things are happening in front of our eyes uh, in a diplomatic a language. You may say that Belarusians are expecting the worsening of quality of life in the next three months. Those who believe that uh, there will be some positive changes, very few of them, and the proponents of the current authorities in Belarus, they are uh, divided in their understanding of what the future will bring. The last uh, line is important here. It says that the war will not spread to the territory of Belarus. The next uh, slide is about the source of information. Where do Belarusians find the information that they uh, discuss and they ruminate, ruminate upon. We saw that the, the loyalty here is unevenly spread across the Belarusian uh, citizens. So here we find uh, Belarusian on state media, Belarusian state media, Russian on state media, Ukrainian media, Russian state media, and 18% just said that, that they don't follow the situation at all. It's important to understand that Belarusians live in various different information spaces and uh, Belarusians do not really like the sources that they don't regularly read. In other words, national Niva readers don't watch Russian media. It means that the people live in totally different media spaces and they perceive situation in a different way and it has been happening for a long time uh, next slides will show more of this 
we asked people about uh, who will win the military conflict. We see that people who watch those in Russian state media are confident that Russia will win. At the same time, those respondents who read those in non-state media, Ukrainian media, they believe that uh, it will be Ukraine who will win in the military conflict. The next slide about attitudes uh, to how long the military conflict will last by source of information. Basically, it fits in uh, the people's opinion based on their source of information for several more days to years. If we look at the Belarusian state media, grow, we'll see that people who read and watch Belarusian state media, 17%, uh, they believe that the war will last several more days. And it's reference to some Belarusian authorities who believe the particular the beginning of March that the war will last several days. The next slide is about interest to Belarus taking part in Russian's military action in Ukraine by source of, of information. We see it's a repetition of what we saw previously and the influence of the media and sources of media. Those who watch Belarusian state media and Russian state media most of them believe that Belarus is not taking part in this war, while respondents who use the Belarusian on state media and Ukrainian media believe that uh, Belarus is taking part in this war, at least majority of them. The same picture is when we ask the question of what Belarus should do, Again, persons who watch Russian and those in state media and uh, the Russian non-state media, they are in favor of pro-Russian variants of Belarusian's role, while uh, the proponents of the Belarusian non-state media and Ukrainian media are in favor of Belarus uh, condemning the actions of Russia and being neutral. They're also in favor of Russian military leaving in Belarus. One third of uh, people watching mm. Belarusian state media, they uh, don't know what is happening, which is also very telling. The next slide is about the repetition of what we saw in the previous slides. We see the comparison of people based on the source of information. We can divide the Belarusian respondents into three groups. Those who watch Russian Belarusian state media, this is the first group. The second group is the those who watch Russian non-state media. In other words, these are people who, on the one hand, they are loyal to Russia as such, but they believe that uh, Probably the official position regarding the conflict is wrong. And the third group involves the people who consult Belarusian and non-state media and Ukrainian media. And they are totally sure that Russian military should not and must not shell Ukraine from Belarus. They also believe that Belarus should not allow Russia to use its territory to attack Ukraine. So. I'm not going to go into detail here. You can see it on the slide. The presentation is available to you in Russian and English. I'd be happy to answer all of your questions in this respect. The next slide about is about attitude to possible changes in Belarus. Here we see that again that there's a difference between the three groups. 
among the three groups and uh, while the proponents of Belarusian state media and Ukrainian media, they are very negative about changes happening in Belarus, uh, like the sanctions imposed, the growth of prices, the audience of the Russian Belarusian state media, they are also very negative about the future. At the same time, they are a bit more positive than the previous group. And uh, here are the conclusions. I've already covered all this, but I will repeat myself. I guess only 3% of the urban population support the engagement of those troops in the war against Ukraine on the side of Russia. The majority of Belarusians do not support the involvement of Belarus in this military conflict. And um, one fourth is in favor of neutrality and the same number of people is in favor of Russia without involvement of Belarus into the warfare. The idea of involvement of Belarus into the military actions is very popular among the proponents of the uh, Belarusian regime, current regime. Most urban residents do not support the concentration of Russian troops in, in Belarus. Belarus uh, expecting that the quality of life will worsen. What we saw now was happening in the past. We made a similar research about echo chambers. It's important to see now how different people view the situation in Ukraine. It's very much connected with the fact that uh, and with the information they consume. Moreover, while in the past we trying to gauge this, we uh, spoke about the internal situation in the country when we spoke about the influence of media sources. But here we see that uh, people who consume only one source of information, but we had the opportunity to go outside and listen to opinions of other people. Based on this, and they could evaluate the figure of Alexander Lukashenko. In case of the military conflict happening in another country, Belarusians depend much more on the sources of information. And they have fewer possibilities to independently come to their conclusions based on their experience. I think I will stop here. I'll be happy to answer your questions if they appear. I think we have about half an hour for the for Q and A. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Rehor. Colleagues, we we'll, we'll start our Q and A session now. So you either raise questions and raise your hand. Andrei, please rename yourself so that I could understand the kind of media you represent. I see Andrei and other people raising their hands. Those of you who have planned to ask questions, please rename yourself so I can see your name and uh, surname. It was Camille who raised his hand first. Camille, the floor is yours. My name is Kwasinski. I'm sorry for not renaming myself in the proper way. I'm from Poland. Um, I have only one question. Based on the presentation, maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that you did not ask a question about the actions of Belarus in, in case Belarusian military joined this aggression. I mean, uh, you didn't ask the question to citizens, to citizens whether they will take to the streets, whether they put posters. Uh, why didn't you ask this question? Do you think it was too risky? Or did you think that the answers you would get would be distorted? Thank you very much for your question. 
In fact, we asked the question, what Belarusians should do, because we cannot ask people questions about many different uh, scenarios. Maybe we'll ask this question in the future. Our idea uh, was here. We should give people a, a, a choice of a variety of options so that people would understand what they want and not put them in a concrete scenario in the future. So we decided to give them an option of choosing for themselves. Any more clarifying questions? Well, I, is, there's not much left to clarify if they didn't ask this question. Many analysts and Polish journalists uh, are worried about that, concerned about that. They keep asking me the same question. So if I had this question asked in your presentation, covered by your presentation, I would have some material to work with. But thank you very much anyway. The next question from Andrei Lavruchin. Please introduce yourself and tell us about the media outlets. I will work for many different organizations, but let it be BISS for today. I'm a senior analyst there. I have a question about the respondents, 20% that uh, answering mostly uh, that they don't know. They don't follow. How do you interpret this data that the number of such people is quite high? That's not question number one. And the second question will follow, or should I ask them one by one? Yes, please. The second question is very much about the questions that were not asked, which is very important. You did not ask the respondents about but who would, would be ready to to think that those should not uh, get involved in the warfare or be more active. We understand that one thing is when people think that, uh, think very well about uh, uh, Ukraine, but at the same time, uh, people may work in the company who would organization that would uh, um, provide all the facilities for the military for the russian military first regarding the first question about the people who are indifferent or who not sure it may happen because people are not sure about what is actually happening this option is selected by people who are in the age group 18 to 24 they are mostly in spending their time in TikToks. When big things are happening outside, they don't know what it is about. Also, the big part of people who are afraid to answer this that question, or it, it's too difficult for them, and they know what to select. So they select the natural option. There are also females who usually uh, select this option more often than men. Also, the uh, people who read or listen to and uh, watch Belarusian state media. Statistically, they more often choose this option, which is not sure. Actually, we also try to understand what the uh, the source of the media, or of what the media uh, broadcast by those in state media looks like. There's a mixture of about hockey, about uh, agricultural campaign in the country, and many other things. So it's quite obvious that some people who watch usually watch this kind of news they could be unsure about the real state of events. Regarding the second question, I think we actually discussed this 
while uh, drafting our questions. It's important to understand the limitations of sociology. It's important to understand that people will probably not uh, say that, I yes, I will go and uh, blow up the railways, and something like that, or I will put up banners. When you ask people about the protesting mood inside the country, some people were ready to answer this, to respond. I think we may uh, ask people this once again, but it's important to understand the limitations that the their potential re replies uh, fall under. Thank you very much. Right, I will read several questions from the chat. They appeared before those that uh, the people who raised their hands from Piotr Rutkowski. How many people who were there who started answering the questions, but then they dropped out? I need to clarify this. Next time, we'll add this submission to the slides. Indeed, we see that the fear factor that we surveyed uh, during the previous waves is there. About 8% of people or respondents dropped out when they saw the nature of our questions, that saw that when they saw that the, some questions were highly politicized. As I said, I uh, can send you a link to a research about the fear factor, it remains relevant. For example, now uh, Russian sociologists are discussing the question about how to survey the public opinion during the war time. We already had that. Working conditions were not were far from being the best always. And we also said that uh, the fear factor is there about eight, nine percent fall into this. But uh, I don't think we should apply this eight, nine percent statistics to each slide, but it is there. Two more questions from the chat. Uh, do you have any answer to the question why Belarusians do not support war? Russians, the majority, do support war. The war, even though the two countries had a very long joint future, do you know why the replies vary so much? I think Belarusians don't think it's their war. Russia is waging its war the way they uh, are protecting their military and political interest. Belarus, in this respect, doesn't have any interest and that in uh, the war taking place, those that have imperial ambitions. Some people may believe that there are some uh, Bandera supporters in Ukraine, but Belarusians don't believe that we should, war should be waged on Ukraine because it has to do with human life. Belarusians don't are not interested in this war. Also, the social economic consequences. It's important to understand those things. Do feel that and will feel that, indeed, Belarusian economy um, will collapse. Uh, that the collapse is imminent, and those things don't see the reason for that. Why is Belarus affected by this? Belarusians don't support the ambitions of Putin. So we see this drastic change, drastic difference, a big difference, even though one third of respondents are in favor of supporting Russia in some way. Thank you, Rigor. We need to go back to the slides here. The second question of Alexander about the winners in the war. I think we should go back to the slide. If the majority of Belarusians don't watch 
majority of the Belarusians will, will watch Belarusian non-state media and Ukrainian media. Why uh, about 40% of Belarusians? I'll repeat the question. Why the, in the graph, 45% believe the Russia will win? It's, in fact, it's not that even. It's a, a question about the sources that people consult. And proportionally, the number of people across the board, 45% believe that Russia will win. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Could you please repeat it and clarify it for me? Alexander, could you ask your question in, in person? Good morning, Rigor. What I meant was that in the previous slide, you showed us that uh, the people, it is the not state media, but Ukrainian media. In this graph, we see that 60% of all the people who can watch news and non state media, the Ukrainian media, they believe the Ukraine will win, but in the average graph, it's uh, down to 21%. So on average, 45% of people in Belarus believe that Russia will win. So maybe the media that people watch uh, does not totally affect this. Maybe there's some fear. It's uh, the average figure. Um, actually, I believe you need to recalculate this. I'm particularly worried about this uh, figure, why it is this way. Agur, can you explain this? Rigor, are you there? I think we lost the goal. I'm sorry for this technical glitch. Let's go back to the question. The, was the following question? About 33% uh, on average. Uh, get the information from Belarusian state media and Ukrainian media. We should divide the figures into three, and we'll see that if we consider the 60% dividing them in three, we'll have 20%. That will be the about 21% of, on average, of people who believe that Ukraine will win. We'll see a connection here. At the same time, we must understand that the Belarusian society and many experts, many experts believe that the Russian military have more possibilities to wage war. So people may have this opinion based on the source of information about uh, and based on their own idea of uh, which army is stronger. But uh, we see that people who watch pillars in non-state media and Ukraine media, they believe Ukraine will win. I believe I, uh, I hope I have answered your question. Alexander, do you have any more questions? Identity Kova has also raised her hand. Belarusian has a community to understand the situation, to understand the concern that Belarusians express about the situation. I mean, Belarusians living inside and outside Belarus. 
I would like to ask the question, did you manage to understand? How many people, how many have uh, the relatives serving in the Belarusian military? We did not ask people about that. We have a limited number of questions that we will may ask people about if we we'll, if you look at the number of questions we asked there's a very there's a lot of questions and uh, there are also things that are not covered by our questions but thank you very much for this idea we will probably include similar questions in our next survey because um i fled ukraine first time i did that was uh, when i fled the we ran away from Belarus and uh, based on what we could do, we involved the media coverage. I mean, we spoke with our relatives, at least to live in Belarus, because we know that Belarusians, in many ways, they watch and listen to the state media at least the people I know. And if we consider how many people are living in Belarus, the majority of them, uh, their relatives, neighbors, the friends, have uh, some relatives serving in the Belarusian military. I understand what you're saying, but I believe we'll ask similar questions in the future. We did have a similar question in the past about respondents being familiar with people serving in the law enforcement agencies. Thank you, Irina. We do have more questions from Olga Drindla. Please introduce yourself. Introduce you. Tell us about your media outlet. Thank you. Okay. Olga Drindova, editor of the Belarus Analyst, a German media about Belarus. I uh, had two questions, but I now have three. Rehor, the victory of Russia. What did you mean by this? Should you have something concrete in mind when you ask people about Russia winning the war? Is, does that involve capitulation or uh, the Ukrainian forces, forces given up? Is it, does it mean that Russian forces will remain there? There are many, a lot of options here. What did you mean by this? And some more questions from me. Olga, we do have uh, interpretations of we, I think we should answer your question one by one. Thank you, Olga. In fact, we are trying to understand what, what people feel about that. I believe even Vladimir Putin doesn't understand what the victory would look like in this respect. We are asking people about uh, who have more chances to reach their goals. Thank you. My next question, I'll be brief. I saw a slide with about 40%, or 40 by 40 or something like that. I think it was about uh, participation of Belarusians in the conflict, or something like that. Can we go back to the slide? I was impressed by this slide. I was uh, underwhelmed. Uh, how can we explain this? Is it about the this or that media consumed by people or what? Why? It's about people who support Lukashenko. Lukashenko says openly that we are not involved in this conflict, in this war. And people repeat his words, saying that uh, Belarusians are not involved. And the same is true about state media. Russian media are silent about that. So it's very much uh, in line with uh, 
what Alexander Lukashenko says and what is repeated by the Belarusian state media. This view as this opinion is uh, not particularly regular. Not, it is regular. My task here is to show that some people view the situation in a, in a irregular way. My third question about the proponents of Lukashenko and his detractors the, is the data from in this research new or is this uh, based on the previous research? In fact, we um, made the regular segmentation. Similar approach was when we asked people about the referendum. And I think it will change in the future. The political landscape in Belarus will probably change. Hence, the similar proportions to the previous ones will remain with about 35% being proponents of the protests, about 25% proponents of the current regime. And in the middle, there will be the so-called neutrals. This picture remains relevant. I think it will change because the situation is changing. We must understand that Svetlana Tifanovska in 2020, she won because there was a huge number of people, coalition around her, people who voted in favor of her. And those people had different opinions. And we see that the democratic forces have a particular stance about uh, the conflict. As to Alexander Lukashenko, the number of his proponents will also change because there will be significant political and social upheaval in Belarus and that will be affected by the war. The number of proponents of Alexander Lukashenko will probably go down. And the number of people, I mean, in the middle who don't believe either side will increase. Thank you, Revor and Olga, for your question. We have three more hands raised. Olga Simashka. Hello, Regor. My question is as follows. If the majority of Belarusians don't believe that Belarus and the country is not a co-aggressor, and the majority believe that the political situation in the country and their, their own well-being will, will become worse, can we say that these things are connected? In general, I believe that some people, just like Alexander Lukashenko in many respects, I have a feeling about this, uh, like they do have about weather, but you know, weather has changed today. It's like a given for them. We're not aggressive, but we do get the negative uh, negative effect. Two more questions. Nicolas de la Coste. I'm here with you, but uh, I guess it was technical glitch. Uh, I saw that you raised your hand. No, it's a mistake. Thank you very much. A very important, a very interesting session. Andrei Laurkin. I do have another question, if I may. I was uh, looking closely at the presentation, at the first slide, the first slide. You told us about the age groups. What? So my question is, the next question is about the well-being of the respondents. I remember a similar uh, research was made in Moscow. 
and it showed the the wealthiest people do support war how is it in case of belarus what is the proportional proportion of the well of people supporting this conflict i'm not going to launch an spss at the moment but uh, you're free to consult the data in the the original data that you have uh, that it is available we do have some limitations about 35 slides or 60 slides so we cannot make the presentation uh, for 150 slides, but we do publish all the original data, so you can check and recheck all the age, size, and gender aspects. Colleagues, do you have any more questions? The last chance. If not, I uh, would like to thank you for joining us today. I have uh, put once again in the chat uh, a link to the presentation the YouTube broadcast will be available. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, Regor. And uh, we look forward to uh, our next sessions. We'll be happy to help you conduct this research and cover it. Please follow our newsletters and announcement. Peace. Thank you and goodbye.